What's going on guys? Appreciate you clicking on the video. My name is Nolan Freeland. I'm a multifamily real estate investor. Um, I bought my first mobile home park when I was 19. And today I'm going to walk you through some quick, easy steps to evaluate a mobile home park. So the first thing that you want to get, um, and this could be from a broker, could be from the owner, could be from a wholesaler, to do any sort of evaluation on, I guess, any type of uh, income producing property, you're going to want uh, a T12, a trailing 12 financial statement, and a rent roll. Um, and then if it's a listed on market property, you can, you can get an offering memorandum as well. Um, and what you're going to get off that is you're going to get hopefully the number of spaces in the park. You're going to get the occupied number of spaces, how many paying spaces there are. You should also have how many park owned homes there are versus how many tenant owned homes. And then you, the only other thing that you need from that is you need the average lot rent for the park. Great. Now that we have all this information, we're going to move into our formula. Super easy. I throw it on the screen here or maybe here, uh, whichever one you can see better on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'll say we're dealing with a hundred lot park, hundred unit park, and we have 75 occupied spaces paying $200 a month. And so we're going to take, we're going to multiply 200 times 75. And that'll give us our gross potential rent for that month. And we're going to multiply that by 12 across all 12 months. And that'll give us our gross annual rent potential. And now we're going to take that number. We're going to apply an expense ratio. And so you can pull this number off of the T12, or if you're just doing a quick calculation method, um, for a hundred space park, we're probably looking at anywhere from 35 to 50%. I'd probably go with 40, 40, 45. Uh, it really depends on, you know, if the park's paying for utilities, who pays what, is it private? Is it, uh, you know, well and septic or city utilities? Um, and you, sh you know, it's all important information. We can kind of get into that a little later. And so, yeah, if we're going to have 75 spaces paying $200 a month, uh, across 12 months, and then we're going to multiply, we're going to take our expense ratio of 40%, let's say, and we're going to take the other half of that, which would be 60. So we're going to, if you do 100 minus the 40% expenses, you have 60 left over. So we're going to multiply our gross potential rent times uh, 0 0.6 or 60%, and that'll give us our effective NOI. Um, and then we're going to apply a cap rate to that. And so right now in, you know, Q3 2020, I probably wouldn't buy a mobile home park at really less than ACAP unless it was a big park and there's a lot of upside that I would look at in the sevens. But we're going to apply an eight cap to that. And that's going to give us our, I guess, really a good starting point for our purchase price. Now, the next thing that we need to go through is we need to see if there's any park owned homes. Now, if there is park-owned homes, we need to figure out what the value is of those park-owned homes. And so let's say out of our 75 units, we have 25 park-owned homes. But what's the average shell value of those park-owned homes? Let's say it's $10,000. And bear with me, I'm not too great at math here. So we have 10,000 times 25 park-owned homes. So we're going to add $250,000 on top of our purchase price. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take out the cost of any immediate repairs that we needed to do on the park. And this would include things like road paving. A lot of lenders require uh, the roads to be paved in, in mobile home parks and a lot of parks aren't paved. Um, perhaps replacing some septic tanks. These are really like infrastructure repairs, deferred maintenance that you have to pay for that doesn't bring a return on investment. So we're not talking about the cost of fixing up homes or stuff like that are putting in electrical pedestals. We're talking about repairs that only cost you money because they have to be done. And we're gonna subtract those from our purchase price because the cost of fixing those issues don't bring any ROI back to us. And one last note, I would say on the park owned home side of things, you really shouldn't be paying more than $20,000 for the shell value of a home. Um, in a lot of cases, you can even assume the, the loans of new homes or whatever, depending on the park that you're looking at. And so, yeah, that's a quick calculation formula for evaluating 
uh, mobile home park. This will also work with apartments if you took the average rent across the, you know, the apartments and applied a expense ratio and a cap rate, you get a, you know, an average, you get a, you know, a, f a fair price to start with as far as what the value would be. Appreciate you guys checking out this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't really care. Um, and then if you want to get more value from this channel, we've got real estate stories. We're going to do some maybe more how-to videos like this. Um, and a bunch of other things, hopefully in the future, maybe in a podcast. So if you want to stay tuned for all that, hit the subscribe button. Appreciate it. Have a good day and happy investing.